the Titans just went through one of their worst collapses since I've been a fan. And today, I attempt to completely rebuild the Titans with the goal of winning our first ever Super Bowl. And if I don't win a Lombardi trophy within four seasons, I have to change my channel banner to this for an entire week. I don't want this crap on my channel, man. At the start of the offseason, this is the offense we're working with, and this is the current defense. And I'm sure we all can agree this team needs some work. Now, each year, we'll have different team building tasks that we have to complete, starting with the challenges of moving on from both Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry, along with moving on from my choice of three other starters and acquiring a number one receiver. And if we don't successfully complete 100% of each season's task, I have to forfeit our next first round draft pick. I know this will hurt, but it's all about building for our future. No way Brock Purdy won it all. So it's officially time to now advance into the off season so we can start making some tough decisions so we can begin this rebuild. Now it gets even worse before it gets better. We lose our long time center and our long time long snapper. We've got to start off with figuring out what to do with this guy. He's down to a 75 overall. Like I don't even know what we could give for him. I mean there are a lot of teams extremely interested in acquiring Ryan even though he has a 27 million dollar cap hit. I can't believe both of these guys are about to no longer be Titans. I guess for Ryan, we should click get offers and see what the heck we get offered for him. And it looks like we're not getting that many solid packages. I mean, it might be at the point where we just have to say screw it and take one of these guys. Like, we could get Baker Mayfield in return. Oh man, this is actually tough. I really don't like any of these packages we just got offered. Now, one of the few teams on this list that really needs a quarterback quarterback is the Raiders, so maybe we can negotiate. Will you give me Devontae Adams? Nah, it was worth a shot. What are the odds we can acquire a solid slot receiver in a third round draft pick submitted through? It's not even close. How about just a package of draft picks, a third and a fourth, and take that $27 million cap hit, and it was accepted. I don't know how to feel about that. But our first objective complete, we got some okay draft picks for it. It's time for the big one. As much as I love Derrick Henry, if we really want to do a complete re Bill, we've got to try and get value for him while we can. Oh, this is gonna hurt, but I know it's for the betterment of the squad. I feel like we could get some absolute studs for Derek. We get an offer of Jamar Chase, Tyson Anderson, and a third. Okay, so that's one I might not be able to pass up. What the frick? Tremaine Edmonds and two first round picks from the Bills. There's some absolute studs offered for us. Both receivers from the Chargers? Like, what in the world am I supposed to do here, man? CeeDee Lamb on first and a third? Holy Holy crap, these are some of the most insane offers I've ever seen. Sauce Gardner, every single receiver for the Jags. Bro, this is gonna be like the toughest decision I've ever had to make. I kind of want to see if the Cardinals would give me D-Hop though. I know Jamar Chase is probably the smarter move, but if we went D-Hop from the Cardinals, because he really might get traded, what if we also take like a second and a first round pick? If this doesn't go through, I might have to take the Jamar Chase trade. Send it through. Ah, oh, it's so close! I I've got to do it, man. I've got to negotiate with the Bengals. I cannot pass up on Jamar Chase. What if we also got their first round pick from this year? And what if we also got their first round pick from next year? There's just no way they're giving me Jamar Chase at two first for Derrick Henry. It's so close. What if instead of the other first round pick, we got ourselves a solid offensive guard? We could use every single offensive lineman possible. And it got declined again, but we're so close. So if this gets accepted, not only are we completing the objective of getting rid of Derrick Henry? We're replacing him with a new wide receiver number one and getting rid of one of our other starters. I just don't know if this will be accepted though. And yes it was dude! What a freaking trade for the future of the Tennessee Titans! Hopefully this is just the beginning of an insane offseason number one. I can tell you with absolute certainty I did not expect the offense to already look something like this. Now do we just let Malik start next year? Do we try to get a quarterback in free agency or maybe in the draft? Those questions will soon be answered. Answer. Right now, I've got to figure out what the heck to do with some of these impending free agents. I've got to spend some money and bring some of these guys back at least. Pierre Tart is an anchor of our defensive line, and he's coming back. A big re-signing. All of these guys, 100%, they can walk. I would love for Nate Davis to return and play one of our guards.
guard position? Saying he's going to free agency. I gave you a good deal, Nathan. Thank God we already got Kappa. I guess I'll give his money to David Long, and he's testing free agency too. You know what? The rest of you guys, you can just freaking walk, man. Why do I need these guys from a 7 and 10 roster anyway? We're going to straight into free agency and seeing what the heck we can do with our available cap. Well, first, we're going to be able to see who we can spend that available cap on as we get some big players. Roquan Smith, Tony Pollard, Miles Sanders. Like, are one of these two Derrick Henry's replacement? I'm straight off the bat going to go ahead and try to bring in Roquan Smith. I do think our defense needs a big middle linebacker. He looks pretty interested in our team, too. So I think I'm just going to give him a low-risk offer, a five-year deal. We're going to submit this through. And we are his current top offer. That's a dub. We well, really could use another outside linebacker as well. Josh Allen coming over from our division rival Jags. This could actually be massive, dude. We're going to make this offer six years. I think a 100% will be worth it. Submit it through. Please tell me we're in the lead. Please tell me we're in the lead and we're in the lead. And oh no, Tom Brady's a free agent. Do I actually do this, bro? Do I actually line up with Tom Brady as our starting quarterback in 2023? He wants way too much money, though. He wants $42 million a year. I just can't give that out. Before we see where the free agent signed and before I make a couple more offers, I think I'm going to try to figure out what other two starters I want to move on. We got to shed some cap. We got to get rid of some dead weight. And Taylor Lewan is the perfect candidate to be traded away. He said publicly that he's probably going to be cut. So if we could just get like a decent draft pick for him, I think that would be much better than just outright cutting him. How about a second round pick for Taylor Lewan? Come on now. It was accepted. Holy crap. That'll be big in the draft. Now we do need to move on one more former starter. Why just one more former starter when I can get rid of two? That's if any freaking team is interested in them. If any team could even afford their contracts. The Chicago Bears, they want both of them. Would you be willing to give me a young offensive guard in return and potentially like a third round draft pick for Bud Dupree and Zach Cunningham in a trade that would also shed like 25 mil in cap room? It was declined, but there's potential. What about a fourth round draft pick instead? And it was accepted, boys. That is huge. I mean, to be honest though, this offensive line's pretty horrible. It's pretty freaking horrible, but we still have a ton of money to spend. Orlando Brown is the best left tackle available. We might just have to give him all the money in the world. He's not interested in us, but I'm gonna give him a fat offer anyway. And it looks like we're around top of the list. Ooh, I really like Dalton too. I might give him a little offer and see if he wants to come play guard for Tennessee. Uh, we're tied with the Dolphins. I'll give Will Hernandez a little offer too, because we just need as many offensive linemen humanly possible. I was looking at corner as well, but I can't offer anymore. So at the click of a button, I better evaluate my offers. Hopefully every single one of them is accepted. Tom Brady's still out there and still available. I left tackle. Orlando Brown went to Washington. That sucks. And Dalton went to Miami. This is going horrible. I mean, at least we got Will Hernandez. Yo, we got Roquan Smith. That is actually massive. That's a championship move right there. Now, since we have some money, I really could target a number one corner because we really need one. Yeah, Byron, I'm gonna give you a five-year contract. You better end up in Tennessee. We're not even leading. I'm going to give this man an offer that he cannot refuse. That's how bad we need a corner. Need tight end depth, so I offered Hayden Hurst. And I guess just to be safe, we should offer a pretty Mickey Mouse deal to Andre Dillard as well. I will give him a two-year deal. I think I'm gonna go and also offer Brady a decent deal, I think. At least for a 46 year old, and hopefully nobody else has offered him. Oh, wow. Look who his top offer is. I'm actually gonna up it a little bit and see if we can at least tie the Patriots, and we can't. I don't think Tom Brady's gonna be a possibility. We're just gonna evaluate our offers and see who accepts and declines. We missed out on Andre Dillard too? And now Byron Murphy went to the Eagles. This is not going good for us. Yo, I didn't realize that Josh Allen also accepted. That's huge. I mean, at least our defense has got some talent. I mean, I guess at this point, I can still try and sign Brady. So I really feel like we need a bridge quarterback next year. We're right up there tied with everyone else. I gave him one more offer and it says we're at the top of his list, but I really don't know if that's gonna be enough. I do maybe want to offer some Mickey Mouse deals to these running backs because I do need to sign somebody in case we don't get one in the draft. Hey yo, both James Robinson and Ronald Jones are new Tennessee Titans. The Tom Brady dream just isn't gonna happen, so the QB that we're targeting for next year is actually Daniel Jones. And I actually can't believe it. Daniel Jones is gonna be your Titans quarterback for at least next season. Wow, just 
just like not what I expected. We also got Sterling Shepard on a two-year deal. That's solid. Tom ended up a giant. That does it for free agency, but that just makes it even more clear what we need to target in the draft. It's time for our first draft day. No, the Texans got Bryce Young. And now the Colts went out and got CJ Stroud. We have to compete against Trevor Lawrence, Bryce Young, and CJ Stroud now in the division. That just means there's more pressure on my pick here. Now, who will actually make the biggest impact possible on our squad? I was really hoping we could get enough ammo to possibly get two first round draft picks from this season. I think I'm going to trade down just a few spots with Philadelphia so I could also pick up a second round pick and keep basically a top 10 pick from this year. Just don't take who I want Atlanta, please. They didn't. So I do have another first round draft pick from this year. So I could potentially trade up and get another top 15 pick. But for right now, I'm going to focus on replacing one position. You might think I'm insane, but I think it's the perfect plug and fill fit. Yes, with the 11th pick in the NFL draft, the Tennessee Titans are passing up on a left tackle and taking a running back. And hopefully he can be the cheap Derrick Henry replacement. Please carry our offense to a championship. Yo, the Packers got William? I think it's time. I'm going to try and trade off. Yo, trading up to 16 was that simple? Took our 28th overall pick, a fourth and a third. Oh my gosh, this could not have ended up any better. We've got to give ourselves an absolute mammoth at the left tackle position. And yes, he comes in with hidden development. Oh, that's huge. I think the smart thing to do right here with our second round selection is take a receiver from the University of Tennessee. He doesn't have hidden development, which sucks, but I still think Jalen Hyatt could be huge for our offense. I can't pass up on a corner. Eli Ricks out of Alabama. He also comes in with normal development. We need a center really bad, so I'm just going with the top man on our board, and it might be another stinker. And that to Miwa? Adeboore. We're gonna take him. It's so anticlimactic when the overall is a question mark. I'm just trying to get some corners, and I really like Jalen Jones from A&M. Gonna get Byron Young from Bama. Hopefully, he's okay. Just gonna take the tight end here, because I know he has some upside, at least. Oh, gosh. The moment of truth. How good was our draft class? And holy crap, it actually wasn't too shabby. A great left tackle, good receiver, good corner, an okay center. Our last few picks were kind of stinky, but I think that's an incredible draft number one. A great start for our rebuild. At the start of the next season, this is the offense, and there's definitely some building blocks here, and a lot of talent on defense, but still some positions that need to improve next offseason. This season's really gonna determine what we try and do moving forward at the quarterback position, which we will get our next set of team building objectives next offseason. I might as well scour through the free agency list and see if there's anybody that can help us this year. I mean, not really. We're just full sending it, man, to the playoffs. And keep in mind, this is just our first full season. I would take a playoff berth, but this really is just our first rebuilding year. Okay, so another 7-10 and 10 season is really not what I wanted. Keep in mind, these teams around us, they have Trevor Lawrence, they have CJ Stroud and Bryce Young. We have Daniel Jones. Oh, great. Our offense was dead last. At least our defense wasn't. Oh, Daniel Jones did not have a good season. That's pretty stinky. And our star young running back had an okay year, although he averaged under 4 yards per carry. And for some reason, James Robinson got 14 touchdowns touchdowns as the backup. Oh gosh, our receivers, Jamar Chase only had 600 yards. We can't even get to the quarterback either. Safe to say we still have a lot of work to do if we want to win a Super Bowl. Positives from the season, Robinson's already a superstar X factor. We did have so many players improve, but almost everybody has negative morale boost making them look worse than what they are. And defense is about the same. No way our division rival Jaguars just beat Tom Brady and the Giants in the Super Bowl. Now, as we head into our second offseason, we have three tasks to complete. I want to trade up to the number one pick to get our quarterback of the future. I want to get a cornerback number one. And one way or another, acquire a star offensive lineman. First, let's see if we had any star players retire. Oh, none just yet. Oh, gosh, no. I have to decide whether or not I want to pay Jeff Simmons. And of course I am. There's no way I am not paying Jeffrey Simmons. I am literally giving you everything. You better accept Big Jeff. He's coming back. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Lord, I would have cried. And Danico Autry, he's been so good for us. You know what? I'll bring you back on a one-year deal. That's if you'll accept it. And he doesn't. Okay. And Christian Fulton, what do I do with you? Like, you just haven't been that great. I think I'm just gonna let him walk and try to get a cornerback number one. The most exciting part of the offseason, time to see what free agents are out there and available for us to waste our money on. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What do I do? There's so many good players, bro. I've gotta be smart. I need to breathe. I've 
gotta be smart. What is for the betterment of our squad? Do I really pass up at a 99 overall, though? The problem is, if I go and sign one of these two quarterbacks, I'm not gonna be able to do anything else. Let's focus on what we came to focus on. Let's go ahead and try to get ourselves one of these cornerbacks. We need a new corner number one, and I might as well go after Trayvon Diggs. I will literally give the entire farm for you. I'll give you a five-year deal with enough money to get a pretty fancy mansion in Nashville. Like, this might be a massive overpay, but honest to God, bro, we need them bad. The top offer for now, there seems like there's only one offensive lineman I want to target, and that's Jedrick Willis, who could play on the right side for us. Oh, look how life comes full circle. Now, I'll give you a solid four-year deal. I really actually want Jedrick in Nashville. Now, that looks super solid. And see, man, it's just not possible. Negative $17 million remaining cap if we want to offer Lamar Jackson. This is exactly why I want to trade up for the number one pick to get our quarterback of the future actually on a cheap rookie contract. To be honest, though, I might have enough money to potentially sign Nick Bosa. I mean, I'll offer as much as I physically can. Yeah, bro, we're not even on the list. So how about a Christian Wilkins instead? Imagine him and Jeff Simmons on the same D-line. We'll give him a very low risk offer, so hopefully this is enough to bring him to Nashville. Okay, that's by far his best offer. I think that's it, though. I'm gonna click the freaking button and see if we got our top targets. Gosh, this is so nerve-wracking. Trayvon Diggs is a tight. Let's go! That's at least one of our off-season objectives completed. Jedrick Willis, thank you! Our offensive line is gonna be so improved. Yo, we also got Christian Wilkins. Are you kidding me? I never in a million years freaking expected that. Look how much cap room we have left over, though. That's not good. Really don't think that's too shabby of a free agent class. But now I think it's important that we trade Daniel Jones to a QB needy team just so we can get that breathing room for our cap. A QB needy team's gotta give me something in return or not. The Packers just wanna give me Habuk Baldano. So it might actually be harder to ship on Daniel Jones than what I thought. Is there any team that wants Daniel that could give me a center? No shot, bro. No shot. We just got an 81 rated Connor Williams for Daniel Jones. What the Frick. That offensive line looks a trillion times better now. Sterling Shepard ended up being a cap casualty, but we got a third round draft pick out of it. Same thing for these two fellas who also got me a third round pick. Now, how can I trade all of these picks and somehow acquire the number one overall pick? The Bears have the number one overall pick again. Oh. What the heck is it going to take? I mean, there's just no way it's this simple, right? No way it's just second and third. I just want to test the waters out a little bit. Oh my. What in the world just happened? There's no way the Bears just traded down five spots for a second and a third. There's no shot. Can I somehow finesse another first round pick? Boom! This is where things start to get serious. I told you guys, you just have to trust the process. Come on, bro. I can't screw this draft up. This could really be the draft that takes us to the top of the top in the NFL. And I do have the number one pick in the draft, and I don't think there's any question on who I'm taking. With the number one pick in the 2024 NFL draft, the Tennessee Titans select none other than quarterback of the future, Caleb Williams. I have zero idea what his overall is going to be, but I'm sure this man is going to be an absolute stud. Now, what do we try and do with our second pick? Do I try and trade up again? I mean, there's so many good players left, man. I think there's one guy that I 100% want to target, but I don't know what it's going to take to get him. I think I am for sure going to try and trade up, though. We're going all out. I think the Seahawks with, like, the fifth pick is a really good spot. Well, how about just my first and a second? Like, it's probably going to take so much more than this, and it's actually getting remotely close. How about, like, a fourth round selection from next year? Is this enough? Oh, it's getting closer. I want to keep my third from this year. So how about a third from next year instead? Come on, bro. I want to get my target. Boom! We get the trade. We get the number five pick. Now let's just hope that the man I want is still available. He didn't go number two. The Falcons go with Quinn Ewers. Lions don't take him. Please don't take him. The Lions got Jack Sawyer, an absolute beast from Ohio State, but it's not the guy I wanted. Jets, please do not take him. I beg you. They got Jackson Dart. Holy crap, dude. We're actually gonna get the man that I will. I think is gonna be the most talented 
a player in this draft that's none other than Brock Bowers. Tight end out of Georgia. Yes, I know. A tight end at number five is crazy, but I honest to God think he might be one of the best tight end prospects of all time. I think I'm actually going to draft a corner named Storm Duck, and hopefully he's a high overall. Please tell me that Caleb and Brock Bowers are solid overalls. Like, just be half decent. Be like 78, 79. I'll take that. Or I'll take a 79 and an 84. What in the world? What did we actually just witness? Not to mention Storm Duck was a 74 overall cornerback in the third round. Like, Brock Bowers might be one of the highest overall rookies of all time. Like, that's incredible. This offense heading into season number three really could do some damage. Like, the playmakers are there. I'm just hoping this offensive line is vastly improved. The defense too, man. Like, I already think this is a Super Bowl caliber defense. Here it is, the moment of truth. How much did we actually improve this team in just two off seasons? If anything, I just hope this season is a catapult into season number three where we really can start challenging for a Super Bowl berth. And I hope sooner rather than later because keep in mind, man, I've got to win a Super Bowl within the next two seasons or I have to make this my channel banner. Now that, my friends, is how you complete a turnaround, reclaiming our throne on top of the AFC South with a solid 11-6 and six record. What an improvement in just one offseason for our offense and our defense ends up coming. Okay, that was actually worse. Caleb Williams, what a rookie season. Robinson with another good season, 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns. How about our receivers? Did they improve this season? Yes, they did. Traylon Burks finally breaking out. Jalen Hyatt with a good season. Brock Bowers had 11 touchdowns as a rookie. But me personally, though, I'm kind of disappointed with the lack of production from Jamar Chase. Like, that's great and all, but it's Jamar Chase. So it definitely looks like Roquan Smith and Josh Allen were all pretty big signings. That's improved, though, but our pass rush really still isn't what I want it to be. Caleb Williams really came in the top 10 for the MVP award. Wait, how did he not win Rookie of the Year? Holy crap, what an improvement from the offense. Bijan's up to a 90, Caleb Williams up to an 82, Brock Bowers up to an 87. I would love to find out how Christian Wilkins got injured when injuries are off. We're just sending it through to the next week. We can't get first rounded at home against the Broncos. And we did. We actually did. Wow. Maybe signing Tom Brady really was the best decision the Giants ever made. Disappointing end of the season, but as we head into offseason number three, we have two more off seasons to get it right to hopefully build a Super Bowl championship squad. And let me tell you, I'm super confident what we've built up to this point. Let's make sure we didn't get any big retirements, though. Yay, saved again. Now for off season three's objectives. Number one, we've got to move on from Kevin Byer. He just cost too much for the fact that he's starting to regress pretty heavily. And secondly, I want to pull a Rams and trade our top four draft picks for this upcoming class for proven NFL talent. Oh gosh, which players am I going to have to pay money to this offseason? Jamar Chase. Okay, that's not what I wanted to see. We got to keep them somehow. But there are some players that I definitely want to give some money to. I'm going to give them a low risk deal. Up this a little bit because we are not getting better talent at the wide receiver position. That's just not possible. So going to give him basically everything and he's glad we got the deal done. He's coming back. Ryan Stonehouse is the best punter in the league. So we're 100% bringing him back. Caleb Farley, I mean, we'll bring you back. You're still a star. I mean, Tevin Jenkins has also been good for us. So I'll give him a medium risk offer and he's testing out free agency, whatever, Tevin. And as mentioned, I think we are just going to let Kevin Byard walk. I will bring back Dylan Radons in case we need another guard, but no, he's going to free agency. And you know what? The rest of these guys, screw y'all. And before we trade our picks, let's see what we can do in free agency. Need to see who's even available. Okay, there's some good players. There's actually some really, really good players out there for us to sign. Like, instead of Kevin Byer, can I just get Micah Hyde, who is a scheme fit, on a one-year contract? I mean, he wants to come to Nashville, so I will give him a high-risk deal, and hopefully he will sign. Hold on a second. Is this about to be the David Long reunion? Holy crap. Landon Dickerson would be a perfect fit. I don't think we have enough money, dude. No. In the meantime, at least we got David Long. And instead of Micah Hyde, why don't we withdraw that offer and try and get Richie Grant. He's gonna be cheaper too, so we can sign him and maybe then get Landon Dickerson. JK, he's gone. 
Great. We'll offer Natane Muti instead. And we got Mr. Muti. And we also got our Kevin Byard replacement. I know it's nothing crazy, but I still think Richie Grant will be a solid one. Now, what in the world should I trade my draft picks for? I gotta make sure I make the best deal possible. Maybe another corner, maybe another offensive lineman. Yo, just with our second round pick and Jalen Jones, I was able to get us an improvement on the offensive line. Zero shot, bro. Zero shot. I just brought in Darius Slave from the Eagles. Getting rid of Alex Kappel because the offensive lineman we signed in free agency is cheaper. Now, this might not be exactly what you expected in return for a first round pick, but we had really, really tight budget restraints. And I'll take myself Devin White and a young receiver in Ja'Cory Brook. And our final draft pick got traded away alongside David Long, Kyle Phillips, for Brian Brees, the young stud defensive tackle out of Clemson. Like, how in the world? At the start of next season, and I really do believe this could be our year. Offensive line's incredible. But we have all the playmakers in the world A growing quarterback in Caleb Williams Apparently we have a stud backup running back now And the defense literally has studs everywhere you look Come on bro, first round buyer bust What do you mean? We're an 89 overall team, dude Why is it always the 7 and 10 season? We literally only have one more season to complete today's challenge Our offense sucks again, apparently I mean, that's not a bad year at all so like, what is Madden talking about? I mean, we ran the ball really good, too. Almost 4.7 yards per carry. We have such good receivers, too. Almost three 1,000-yard receivers. And we got to the quarterback better than ever before. So, like, what the frick's the problem? At least Caleb's up to an 85. Bijan's up to a 94. Brock Bowers is over a 90 now. This offense should have done so much better. And no shot the Cowboys won the Super Bowl before us. It's time to lock the frick in. Our only objective for this offense offseason is to literally trade all of these draft picks away to build the best squad possible to go all out in year four. But first, we need to see who we have to re-sign. Ray, we're gonna have to get another corner because Darius Slate called it quits, although he was still an X-Factor. Gosh dang it. Oh no, we have so many big players that we have to re-sign too. We're gonna start by hopefully re-signing Traylon Burks. If not, I'm gonna cry. He's coming back. We have got to have a Monty Hooker come back. We cannot have a massive hole at safety. And he's going into free agency. Gosh dang it. We can't also lose our center. And he's also going to free agency. We could literally be screwed. Now, Tier Tart, you've got to come back, right? Thank you. So we definitely have holes to fill at strong safety. And we got to get a better cornerback number two. We also definitely need a better center. I mean, I would love to get Debo Samuel. I'd love to get DJ Moore. But I can't afford any of these fellas. I mean, we honestly might be better off just going ahead and trading for players. Because there's like nobody good in this free agency class. Even Teron Johnson would take up half of our cap space, so I think we're gonna really go all out and just trade everything, pull a Rams, and try to build the best squad ever for our last year. You know what? I don't feel like this is a bad deal at all. We get ourselves a solid cornerback. We trade away Harold Landry, who is worth $17 million a year. We needed to free up some cap. I don't think you guys are ready for what's about to happen, and boom! Talk about getting a solid Harold Landry replacement. And don't mind if I do. We get ourselves our Amani Hooker replacement with Isaiah Simmons, dude. It took a second and third from next year and a seventh from next year. And talk about landing an absolute stud center. All that's left now are these third round draft picks. Didn't expect that. We needed another solid corner though. We get youngster Joey Porter Jr. straight up for our free safety who I'm now going to try and replace. And that's so funny. We immediately steal Jalen Thompson from them. A higher rated free safety than we just sent him. Straight up for Caleb Farley who had fell way down the pecking order. Still scheming, boys. I'm still scheming. I had to turn everything into a pick from next year. It all makes sense here soon. I literally just went out, used that pick, and got the best possible package that I could afford with $2 million left over. Everything comes down to this season. Like, look at this offense we have assembled. Like, this is insane. We're up to a 91 overall team, 91 offense, 93 defense. I seriously cannot believe this entire challenge just comes down to the final season, there is no way a 91 overall team doesn't at least, at least win their division. I really think I've done everything I can up to this point. Now that, my friends, is everything we've been working towards. A 14 and 3 season, which by far ended up being the best out of any NFL team. Finally, a top 5 
five offense in the league, and for some reason we just can't put together a good unit on defense. Caleb Williams with another incredible season, 4,800 yards, 45 touchdowns, only 10 picks, and by far Bijan Robinson's best season of his career, 15 touchdowns and 1,300 yards. Who would have thought after acquiring Jamar Chase, Traylon Burks would have emerged as our best receiver? Who would have thought after trading for Jamar Chase in the first offseason that Traylon Burks was going to emerge as our wide receiver number one? I mean, 18 touchdowns in one year? I mean, if he does this in real life, I'll be okay with the A.J. Brown trade. Now, that is more like it. You guys see how we fare in this season when we can finally get pressure on the QB. Oh, and unfortunately, Caleb couldn't get an MVP. Josh Allen had to keep stealing him. But it's time to see who the heck we have to take on in the divisional round. I actually beg, bro, please, one win away from the AFC Conference Championship game. We are too good, too talented not to win this game. Can we get it? Let's go! Nah, bro, not the Bengals again. Not the Bengals and Joey B with the Super Bowl berth on the line. We have home field advantage again, bro. There's no way we choke two games at home in the playoffs against the Bengals. Oh my god, boom! What a performance, dudes! We won by 32 points! The three seed Vikings stand in our way of the first ever Super Bowl win in Titans history. We're a 93 rated team, man. This team is built for this. I kid you not, a 10 overall difference. We have got to end things off with a win. Please, Caleb, to save my channel. Not the fast start that we wanted because we go down 7-0. The Vikings get the ball back. This is not good. We finally score. We finally equalize. Come on, take the lead before halftime. We do. 14-7. Come on, add to the lead. Add to the lead. Two touchdown lead. The Vikings answer. Oh my gosh, bro. It's going to come down to the wire, man. We score again. Keep him out of the end zone. Keep him out of the end zone. The Vikings got the ball back. Boom! After four seasons of a complete rebuild from start to finish, we have brought the first ever Lombardi Trophy to Nashville. The scenes, dudes! This makes me happy. This makes me so happy. Hopefully one day soon I'll be able to witness this in real life. Now if you enjoyed that one, click right here to watch me take the worst team in NFL history and try to win a Super Bowl with them. And let me tell you, it's a lot harder than this Titans one.